Welcome aboard. My name is Joe Farkas, and I'm the architect of this ship. And I'd like to tell you a story. This ship, the design of this ship, as well as all the ships that I have done for Carnival Cruise Lines, has a story. And that story begins with an idea. It's what I call a central idea. And that idea is a, some people like to call it a theme, I don't. It is a point where I begin all the designs. It's an intellectual idea for me to build artistic creations around that all of the public rooms on board of the ship follow so that uh, to me there is a coherence in the design that uh, varies in how that's interpreted from room to room. The process um, begins by making the drawings that flesh out the central idea. These are all architectural drawings done to scale that show the floor plans, the ceiling plans, the main elevations and details, uh, some of which we do on computer, but again, the initial drawings are all done by hand. Basically, everything that you see on this ship today is laid out by us and specified by us so that you Every note is carried out in some particular material or detail around the ship. We then turn all this documentation over to the shipyard, who in turn turns it over to the subcontractors who make each individual public room. And during this whole course of roughly about two years, we are in constant touch with the shipyard, going to the subcontractor, seeing mock-ups, watching it under construction. So it is a total hands-on job until the ship is finished and we're all sitting on board like we are now. When it came time to design the Carnival Conquest, of course, I began the process of trying to come up with a central idea. The Impressionists, for me, are probably my most favorite style of artwork. Each room, in some way, could relate to a particular painter or painting of that style. And when it came time to design the first space, which is always, for me, the lobby, the promenade, stair area, I wanted to create an ode to all of the Impressionist painters. First of all, in the lobby, there is a great dome which extends up the atrium as a wall and we had created by a painter in Italy a collage of scenes from various famous Impressionist paintings. To amplify that I created a sort of latticework motif which looks like some conservatory made out of white latticework that you could see in some Impressionist paintings and I designed these glass flower lights and they're done out of Murano glass and it's a sort of three-dimensional representation of a Impressionist painting. If you think about the Impressionist time period and you think about entertainment and you think about real shows, what popped into my mind was the Moulin Rouge, the Bal de Moulin Rouge. And of course the Impressionist or post-Impressionist painter who is most associated with that was Toulouse-Lautrec. So I thought that this theater could be a recreation in a way of the feeling at the old Moulin Rouge, which was really outdoor space, sort of a garden. So I recreated the Moulin, the mill, on either side of the stage with the turning windmill vanes and the sign Bal de Moulin Rouge that came from that period. And huge murals of recreations of the famous characters that Toulouse-Lautrec painted that were either patrons or performers at the Moulin Rouge. Our smaller show lounge is named after Degas, one of the most famous of all the uh, French Impressionists who did the little ballerina that is in the stairways. And the little ballerina is also used in this room because to me it's his most well-known work. There's not that many Impressionist sculptures around and this is one of the best. Since the two main restaurants on this ship are two of the largest spaces, I thought two of the biggest names in art should be represented here, and that would be Monet and Renoir. Since the Impressionist period comes from Paris, you'll see miniature wood cutout versions of the Eiffel Tower in between the windows and along the balcony walls that are backlit, which give a feeling of the period. And then there is also in the ceiling grill work that looks like part of the structural elements of the Eiffel Tower. On board the Conquest, our most elegant restaurant is our premium restaurant, The Point. 
And it's called The Point because the artist that is featured here is uh, Georges Sorel. And he is known for his pointillist style, which means that his paintings were created with little individual dots of color. So that if you look at it really, really close, it doesn't look like anything. You have to stand back to be able to actually see the painting. So we have a lot of reproductions of his paintings featured along the walls. And to create the romantic atmosphere, I put in a very dark ceiling with star lights in it. Our casual or Lido restaurant on the Conquest is the restaurant Cezanne. And we have reproduced some of his famous works and motifs in hand-painted ceramic tiles. The idea was to create sort of a 19th century Parisian cafe feeling in this room. The Tahiti Casino is following a painter who was a post-impressionist, Paul Gauguin. And Gauguin's most famous work was done in uh, Polynesia, in Tahiti, where he painted these beautiful pictures of Tahitian women. But again, he is one of the few painters of that time who also did wood sculpture. Also, you'll see architectural details that you might see in a Tahitian hut with large pieces of bamboo lashed together, forming a latticework of beams uh, going around the ceiling. Gauguin is also carried through into the sports bar with a starlit ceiling above the bamboo latticework that creates this sort of mysterious Tahitian feeling. Henri's is the dance club, and Henri is Henri Rousseau. Rousseau had a very particular style. It was almost cartoon-like in, in a certain way. Probably his most famous painting shows this very uh, interesting looking lion standing in the grass. And I've used that as the motif to create a kind of romantic atmosphere in this dance club. So I've taken steel cut by a laser into the grass patterns that you would see in a Rousseau painting and then it's been hand painted in the style of Rousseau. The piano bar features Matisse. Matisse made some very wonderful paintings and in his paintings there were architectural interiors and they had wallpaper painted in motifs. So I thought in this room I will make it a complete melange of these wall coverings but done as paintings throughout the room. So you'll see on the walls, on the floor, on the ceiling motifs that are parts of any particular Matisse painting but then blown up so like you're actually in one of these architectural interiors that Matisse painted. Another post-impressionist painter that we used is Van Gogh and he painted in a very particular style where his view of the world was distorted. So you'll see the columns in the room, rather than being four square sides going vertically, I took that square column, I squished it down, twisted it, and then painted it in the style of this heavy impasto paint that Van Gogh was so famous for. And then I created lights of Murano glass that were also like Van Gogh's irises and other flowers that he painted, including big murals of the sunflowers, which he is probably the most noted for. What we have on board, it's an experience. It's something meant for you to have fun and enjoy and relax and all of those things that you've come on board the ship for. And we spare really no expense in making that happen. Almost nothing that you see on board is off the shelf material, so to speak. Everything follows the specifications that I mentioned, but they're all custom made pieces. It's not a museum, but in a way it's like going to a museum because there is so much to see and it will really enhance your cruise, I think, by making this a discovery process. My hope is that the environment itself will engender this type of uh, exploration and discovery process. Further, I hope by the end of the cruise, you haven't really seen everything yet and you'll want to come back again. <music>